This episode of ResX is brought to you by SEGA, the Saskatchewan Indian Gaming Authority. Welcome to another episode of ResX, an Indigenous lifestyle show for everyone. My name is Cadmus Delorme. And I'm Erin Goodpipe. We are your co-hosts. So the clip you just watched is from a short documentary called Dancing the Space in Between, which features the late Lacey Morin Desjardins, who is also a former member of the ResX team. We'll be seeing more of that later. Working for ResX, they don't just sign our fine option hours. We do have to work for free at times. I'd like to take this time to thank SEGA, Saskatchewan Indian Gaming Authority, for helping mm -hmm. us out in making this show possible for you to watch. Thank you, SEGA. Mm -hmm. So, are we gonna have a great show? Oh yeah, we got lots coming up for you guys. I really like the theme today. I, uh, I knew Lacey, yeah. and throughout this whole show, we are going to showcase some of the great things that she has left in her legacy. So I'm looking really forward to being a part of the show today. Mm -hmm. Here's honoring Lacey Morin Desjolais. Enjoy. Showcasing people making a positive impact in our communities. Terence Littleton, a member of the Kwakatoos First Nation, and very renowned and known in Regina, is a hoop dancer. Rezex caught up with him at Agribition. You guys ready to see a hoop dance? Oh, wow, oh, wow. It's gone, right? So when an eagle comes out of its egg, when he sees from its nest, he takes his elements and also sees the buffalo, the deer, the moose, the bear, the horseback rider. Sees the plants, the trees, all of that. My name is uh, Terence Littleton. I'm from the Kawakatoos First Nation, but reside here in Regina. Um, today, I'm here at the uh, 2015 Canada Western Agribition, and what I'm doing here is bringing uh, tr the traditional hoop dance to the, the community here, of the people of Regina. And what I do here is um, teaching uh, the hoop dance and the, tr the origins and uh, the lessons of the five basic teachings of hoops. Uh, the five basic teachings that um, I had to learn before I was able to pick up one who was to listen, to watch, to learn respect and love and kindness so these are the five basic teachings that I had to do before uh, I had to uh, pick up these hoops and again what I do here is I bring up the children and I teach them like a five uh, hoop dance routine but meanwhile going through the steps of each lesson and again it's it's just not teaching them the dance but it's teaching them these values of um, the teachings of our people the one I really uh, learn is respect again um, respect your elders uh, respect your teachers your mentors um, and also most respectfully respect yourself um, th that, that's one of the basic teaching that I try to learn every day and also love and kindness again try to put your passion into anything you do in life because like I talked about the five basic teachings listen watch learn respect love and kindness you put your whole well-being into something becoming an athlete your education you, know, you want to become um, a grass dancer, boot dancer, anything. Anything that you would have passion for, you put all those teachings into it and you can be successful um, 100, 110%.
We are pleased to feature the role models of a proud generation calendar. Check out this week's feature. My name is Jasmine Wachiskanek. I'm from Kwakatoos First Nation and I was raised in Regina, Saskatchewan. I currently attend Belfer Collegiate in grade 12 and raised my daughter Anastasia who's currently five months old. I really changed who I was as a person when I found out I was gonna become a mother. I made some drastic changes in my lifestyle for my daughter and I cleaned up my act, basically, and I started attending school, and I currently have 90s in my, all my classes, and I've changed who I am as a person, and I've sacrificed a lot for my daughter to have a better life, to provide a better life for her. I actually want to attend the First Nations University here and go into business and public administration and hopefully start my career after I'm finished university. Um, it's never late, too late to change who you are as a person. Um, Never give up on your dreams and always keep trying because anything's possible if you put your mind to it. Role models, they are in all of our communities. If you are a role model, wear it proud on your sleeve because many kids, many people look up to you. We have role models all over the place. ResX will be right back. Don't go too far. Let's make 2016 the year of you. Try to exercise daily. Yes, access hyperspeed internet surfing counts. Push yourself. Binge watch an entire season of that TV show. Remember that tomorrow starts today. Once you set your PVR to record, and always feel the burn of insanely fast access hyperspeed internet. Find out more at technologythatworks.ca. Read Saskatoon, we've been providing free literacy support and services to our community. Parents are a child's first teacher. Their home is the first classroom. Our community is their first school. People walk through our doors for two main reasons. One is they want to improve their literacy skills, or the other reason they come through is to help someone. SEGA is a part of our organization. They've embraced our mission and our vision. We salute their commitment to learning. Welcome back. This week's short documentary, Dancing the Space in Between, was done by the late Lacey Morin Dejali. Check it out.
My name is Kelly Asuka and I go to school at Saskatchewan Indian Institute of Technologies. I'm from Thunder Child First Nation. The SEGA scholarship for me brought a lot of value. Just got inspired and motivated and that's what the scholarship really did was inspire me. They're investing in, in people and I think SEGA truly helps communities in Saskatchewan. This year marks the 10th anniversary of Access Communications TP Bingo, and we're giving you even more chances to win. Cards are just $12 and are available wherever you see the TP Bingo sign. All proceeds go to the Access Communications Children's Fund. If you're looking to have some fun, win some cash, and support a great cause, play TP Bingo, Saturdays at 5 p.m., only on Access 7. Welcome back. In this week's podcast, filmmakers from the documentary Dancing the Space in Between got together to talk about working with the late Lacey Morin Digili. Check it out. Welcome, everybody, to the ResX podcast. Um, I, my name is Chris Ross, um, and I am uh, one of the co-hosts here, and I'm here with, as always, Dr. Shawnee Pete from the University of Regina, and our special guest today is filmmaker Trudy Stewart. And we are here today uh, for a very, uh, uh, very important reason, a very special reason, um, because um, February 10th is the... Uh, uh, first anniversary of the passing of the late Lacey Morin Desjardins. And uh, for those that don't know, Lacey was a member of the ResX team. She was a, uh, a contributing writer um, that came on board of, of our magazine in, the, in late 2013. And she was, was with, us, with us for a while there, and she was really uh, very artistic and um, when we lost her, it was very uh, heartbreaking for a lot of us here at ResX. Okay. So, um, Trudy Stewart, I'll just get you to introduce yourself and just tell uh, everybody a, a little bit about yourself and what you do. Okay. Uh, my name is Trudy Stewart. I'm from Flying Dust First Nation in Meadow Lake, uh, but I spent most of my life here in Regina. I uh, make uh, short films and I also work with MISPA on a celebration of Indigenous filmmaking, uh, organizing their uh, Indigenous Film Festival in Regina every December. Uh, we also do outreach work with um, Northern communities and um, just work around the community. Um, and basically, as a freelance artist, you're, you're usually doing at least three things. <laughs> so I, I do a lot of shooting and editing. And... On this episode of ResX, uh, we showed you uh, the full documentary of Lacey Morin de Jardins that you helped produce. Um, could you talk a little bit about um, the process of that and what went, th um, what was it like working with Lacey? Um, you know, Lacey, the artist, the filmmaker, the dancer. The um, uh, what was it like to uh, to really get to know her on that level as well, and what you do. Uh well, Lacey was really uh, wonderful to work with, and uh, I had worked with her on a few things before that. Um, actually, we worked together at the Sagewewak Storytellers Festival in 2014, and uh, she was actually my superior or, you know, the person that I answered to. So that's why you always are in, in this business nice to everybody because you could be hiring them, they could be hiring you back. It's uh, you're you're never somebody's boss. So <laughs> I always appreciated that when uh, I worked with her. She had some really really nice things to say to me when we were finished and said she wished that uh, we could work together again. And she took part in a workshop that we did uh, for emerging documentary storytellers. And we invited those storytellers to um, come up with projects that they wanted to do, either inspired by the uh, Regina Indian Industrial School's legacy or the unmarked cemetery uh, on Pinky Road that's uh, not protected. And that was uh, something that she really wanted to see protected so uh, she 
wanted to do a dance to honor the children that were that lay there um, and give them the respect and, and ceremony that they never got back in their time. You had an opportunity to spend a fair amount of time with her through the filming. Um, can you describe uh, being out with her in throughout the filming process? Yeah, Lacey was uh, really wonderful to work with. And uh, her and Michelle had worked very closely together and they had gone through ceremony and, and done all the choreography. So they really uh, did all the hard stuff on their own. <laughs> so we had the easy part of just, um, you know, showing up. And she had um, had an incredibly talented cinematographer from Calgary, uh, Aaron Bernakovich. Uh, working on it as well as uh, David Roman who did sound so uh, when I look at pictures and that of that day I can uh, you know people think as a you know oh the producer does really important things and I was uh, you know taping the the curtains together at the conservatory (laughs) lugging sandbags up four flights of stairs and uh, she was just uh, really happy and uh, easy to work with and was just really gracious and um, very thankful for everything that we did even if it was just bringing her a towel she was just full of smiles and thank you and um, so she was really easy going and uh, easy to work with that way she was um, very generous to everybody around her so um, so with that I, I want to um Thank you very much for coming today. I know it's really hard to talk about these things, you know. Well, thank but, you for uh, having me. You know, um, and uh, so th- I want to thank everybody else for um, uh, for tuning in and for watching as well too. And uh, Sean, any, any last words? I just want to thank you, Trudy. You have such a great responsibility when you tell stories in this way, and you continue to carry this story forward. And you give of it generously in the spirit that Lacey would have appreciated. And it's a a huge responsibility. Many thanks to you. Many thanks to you. Mm -hmm. What an amazing, amazing documentary. It was. Mm -hmm. You know, in there I seen the spirit Mm -hmm. of the late Lacey Mm -hmm. just moving around. Not only about Lacey, but what she meant to bring in this documentary was Mm -hmm. the spirit of our residential school people, the ones that have passed on. And that's what she really tried to showcase. So not only did I see Lacey, Mm -hmm. but I also seen the message that she was trying to bring that Mm -hmm. throughout our land, the spirit continues, just as if the late Lacey more indigenous would. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I really, it really brought forward the contemporary issue of, um, you know, people trying to build on the land of the residential school there. And then we know um, that there's 40 plus um, children who had died there. And I know Mm -hmm. she was really representing and blending that contemporary issue and the Mm -hmm. histories of our people with that indigenous spirituality mixed in there. And I really, really, really felt that. I really feel that right here. For sure. You know, just protecting a sacred area like Mm -hmm. that, there's many around Saskatchewan and society has to understand Mm -hmm. that there is these areas, they're very sensitive emotionally, mentally to a lot of Indigenous people. And this documentary really shows that there's a way to look at it, there's a way to address it. It's not just Mm -hmm. about trying to to protect it, but there's something like a reconciliation that we all have to be a part of. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I really got out of this this documentary. Mm-hmm. And just seeing, I knew Lacey. Mm-hmm. I, I seen her at feasts in the community. And one time I seen her dancing at the, la- at the North American Indigenous Games wow. at the opening ceremonies. And just seeing her dance there, I just knew her spirit was special. And what she brought was something amazing, just like she mm-hmm. did in this documentary. Yeah, for sure. And everyone who speaks of her, I hear the exact same thing mm-hmm. from her. I just think her, her work and her legacy is going to live on. And, and this documentary um, says that and speaks poignantly about that. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. if anybody is out there and they want to do work as such the late Lacey did, do it. You know, it's about showing your spirit and being proud of who you are. And that's Mm -hmm. what I think she showed. So let's move that forward and let's take that teaching Mm -hmm. and we'll continue through life. Thank you so much, Rezex. Rezex.
just want to know, uh, what is this delicious uh, morsel of uh, plate that you're eating? Uh, bannock and chili with rice. Good. It tastes real good, yeah. Good, good. Bannock and rice. Now, that's a strange combination. 